Welcome to the Simply Authentic Podcast with Angie and Tanya, where we hope to inspire you to dream big and push past your fear, empower you to take charge of your own life, and challenge you to be the most authentic self you can be. Welcome back to the Simply Authentic Podcast. I'm Tanya Murfin. And I'm Angie Mullings. And we have a guest with us today. I would like to introduce Heather Malachowski. She is Managing Partner and Interior Designer for Decorating Dens. Welcome, Welcome Heather. Heather. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to see you as always. Yeah, yeah this will be a fun, fun conversation. Yeah. Yes. So first, just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you got into interior designing and that kind okay. of thing. Awesome. Yeah, so I started actually back in high school. I always wanted to do fine art, you know, Mm. and then I was afraid that I wouldn't make any money. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, what can I do where um, I can be creative and be analytical? Because Mm -hmm. I like math and all those things too. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of dawned on me one day um, how often I would rearrange furniture at home. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I just like, you know, came out of nowhere, and yeah. I'm like, this is perfect. This is perfect for me. Yeah. And so, so yeah, I mean, even when I was little, I would flip-flop the dining room and the living room furniture, uh-huh. you know, and I would just take care of it all, yeah. and Mom would come home and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Looks good. So, anyway, so that's why I decided um, to go to school directly for that degree um luckily i like i said figured it out beforehand Mm -hmm. yeah so Mm -hmm. i went to msu Mm -hmm. um i have a four-year um degree bachelor's of science Mm -hmm. in housing and interior design okay Okay. and you know with that you learn a lot of construction-y things and you know you kind of learn a wide gamut Mm -hmm. of information um and then you don't learn lots of things that you should know right (laughs) so yeah yeah, like in any degree program, yeah. right? Oh, that's right. And after that, because you'd ask me how I actually got started, yeah, I went straight from school. Once again, I was really blessed to have the opportunity to be an assistant for Nola Shivers, who was yep. the owner at the time and who we bought the business from got for decorating den. So I've actually been there my whole career, awesome. which is a uh, sixteen years this summer. Wow! Oh, wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I know Nola has a long-standing relationship with many, many people in Springfield yes. area. So yes. she she's a name that a lot of people, people will recognize. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. so I was really fortunate yeah. to, you know, mm-hmm. work under her yeah. because I learned so much that I had no idea that, would even come up, you know, that you they just don't even bring up in college, yeah, you know. Right. Like, I didn't know I was going to be a salesperson. Right. I mean... That's true. Wasn't my you don't mindset. like link those, yeah. Right. Like as far as okay, it's like and so that was kind of an ugly surprise. Yeah, yeah. I had to learn. Yes, you know I'm more than that. Obviously, I'm a an advisor and you know all mm-hmm. of these things. Yeah. But you know, right when I graduated, I was like, oh, I will be working on commission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And nope, Never they didn't cover that. any of that yeah. Yeah. in school. And now yeah. I believe they do. They've added some classes and yeah. things like that at MSU. But So that's that was good. kind of a shocker. I think I that's a really good point to make because I talked to I talked to the GoCap students and mm-hmm. some other students and people say, like in our industry, people say, oh, you guys have the fun job. You get to go mm-hmm. open doors and look at yeah, houses. Look at houses. Get that. It's yes. so fun. I'm like, it is fun. It yeah. is fun. Yes. 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 It's stressful. Yes. yes. But it is fun. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. There it is. is that element. Yes, it is. With many it's others. Great. But I'm sure yeah. that people thinking about getting into interior design, they're that creative brain. They don't mm-hmm. think about the fact that they've, right. they're have they going to have to sell themselves, sell, yeah. right. sell items to their clients. Right. Um, right. And maybe don't have that analytical piece that you do That have. I enjoy. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that's a great point. To yeah, make. It, it and I try to tell you know when we get calls into the office for interns or like job shadowing and mm-hmm. stuff, I, I just try to make a real point not to scare them. Sure, at, at all, but right. be like, okay, this is what it is though in real life. Right, yeah. like it's Reality. great, 
But if you can start thinking along those lines now, I'm like, you're going to be light years ahead of where I was for mentally sure. yeah. for commission yeah. job, right. you know, because that's scary. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just having to be salesy yeah. in general. Because yes. you do. Yeah. 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 So. so what does a standard appointment look like for you? Tell us kind of the gamut of things that you do okay. for any said client. Okay. So one thing we always do is a complimentary consultation. So if someone okay. calls or texts or emails or whatever, mm -hmm. um, we're going to visit over the phone a few minutes so I get a feel for what they need and I give them a little background about myself. But the first step is actually going on a home tour in their home so mm -hmm. it doesn't need, need to be picked up it could i don't care how messy it is right. i'm truly not looking at that and people right. are always telling you they're like please don't look at the mess and i'm Same. like i have seen yeah. so many things <laughs> i'm like this is nothing right. yeah. yeah so but i'm truly not i yeah. don't care i'm looking at elements that they like and mm -hmm. dislike so mm -hmm. that's their job is to when they're you know as the guide, mm -hmm. they're showing me things that they really like, things that they really do not like. Mm -hmm. So that gives me a better idea of their style right away. Um, and then along, you know, when we're doing that tour, I'm taking notes the whole time. Uh, we're talking about um, their needs, like what do you want this room to feel like? Mm -hmm. um, if they wanted a new sofa, how do you sit in the sofa? True. Do you lay in the sofa? Mm -hmm. You know, do you lounge? Um, very few people sit upright, mm -hmm. you know, except for when there's company. So I right. need to know, do you entertain? I mean, we kind of go through all these mm -hmm. little things that are really important that a lot of people don't think about. Yeah. So with each little aspect of that job or the project, I'm going to be asking lots of questions um, and doing my very best to listen and write mm -hmm. down anything and everything because you never know what might affect part of that design because mm -hmm. I do want it to function. Right. You know, it needs to be beautiful, but it needs to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so that's honestly my main goal is, okay, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing. I want people to feel like, like really good when right. you walk in, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to fall apart. Right. You know, so yeah. that's something right. we, we always have all these things going on in the back of our heads about mm -hmm. what we think would be the best recommendation mm -hmm. for our client based mm -hmm. on what they need, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And so part of that is for me to be like, Angie, I think you need to spend more money on this sitting chair because mm -hmm. you're going to sit in it all the time mm -hmm. and read or sit by the fireplace or whatever. Right. Um, but this little chair over here is just for looks really. Mm -hmm. So we can do something cute. It's rarely going to be sat in. So let's put our budget towards the important right, piece. Right. So those are the Makes kinds sense. of conversations right. that I have yeah. Yeah. With, with clients Makes when we are doing sense. this tour and just figuring out what they want. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as far as after that point, I work a, c a couple ways, really. Uh, the main way, though, that way that kind of sets us apart from other designers in the area, because there are lots, and we all work very differently. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm a good fit, sometimes I'm not a good fit, and mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. But how we work is we do not charge our clients an hourly fee, an hourly rate. Okay. So... The way we can do that is because we are like a brick and mortar retail store, except I come to you. Mm -hmm. So instead of you coming to me and looking through samples and helping, you know, you know, at my place, I'm going to go to your house or your business. We're going to look at things um, that in your lighting, because everything looks different mm -hmm. and different, you know, artificial light, natural light, all of these things. And I want to make sure that anything I'm recommending also coordinates with things you already have. Sure. Yeah, right. good point. So, because right. we work, most of our clients were working with um, integrating things that they already have and love. Right. And so that's a huge part of my job is mm -hmm. making sure that the things that are important to them get to stay. Yeah. yeah. Makes yeah. sense. I'm glad you made that point because I, I wanted to make sure our listeners did understand that it's most of the time not an, a complete overhaul in terms of nope. um, what you bring in to um, 
to the space. Right. It's you're working with the things that the client already has. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think a lot of people think of interior design as things, the things that the sofas, the chairs, the things. But I love the fact that you do carpet flooring, um, shades. There are so many different types of window coverings. <laughs> yeah. and it's just Alone. mind yeah. blowing. Mm-hmm. And wallpaper. Yeah. I love that because you helped me pick out some really amazing wallpaper. Yeah. And, you know, wallpaper is is back in for those of you who yes, don't know it that. Is. It is. Um, <laughs> and it is very, I think it is, You is, you've got some examples of it on all four walls and, and you know major impact but i love the subtlety of one wall of yeah. wallpaper i think it makes it stand out it makes a statement but all mm-hmm. of those things are part of what you do yes yeah absolutely so um to that point and i guess to continue from um tanya's question earlier is since we are like a brick and mortar store mm-hmm. um what we do is we have direct accounts with the manufacturers of window treatments um, companies, like shade companies, carpet companies, mm. furniture companies, accessory companies, lighting companies, all of these places, you know, from around the world. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we get what we can from the U.S., but a right. lot of it's from overseas. Sure. Mm-hmm. So um, we do what we can there. Um, but because we have a direct wholesale account, we can sell them at a competitive retail price just like any other brick and mortar right. mm-hmm. store around mm-hmm. town. And so that is how we make money. That's a big question because they're like, well, if you don't charge for hours, how does it work? Mm-hmm. And that is how it works. It's mm-hmm. it's really a simple concept. And we have just found that it's definitely the biggest bang for your buck. Like we want our clients to feel um that they're getting a val- like something very valuable, mm-hmm. right? Um, because along with, you know, like Ange said, if I'm doing sofa and a rug and maybe new carpet in a place, part of that is I'm going to be doing maybe a floor plan for you. So I'm right. going to make sure, okay, whatever we're looking at, I will know it is going to fit True. Mm-hmm. before yeah. I even show it to you. I won't right. show you things that do not work. Mm-hmm. And right. so that's a major thing too is my job is to narrow down once I know your budget mm-hmm. and your style and your needs, mm-hmm. then I'm the one who sifts through thousands of products mm-hmm. boop, to narrow it down to mm. two or three or five yeah. that would best work. Mm-hmm. And I always tell my clients, I'm like, you need to be honest with me. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Right. If you don't like it, like, I need you to tell me yes. because this is about what you like. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to let them make a mistake. Yeah. You know, that's right. what I tell them. It's not like I'm trying to trick them, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. and have two bad choices and one really good choice. Right. Anything that I'm showing my clients will work. Right. Mm-hmm. And so then it just boils down to, okay, what makes them the happiest? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. See, that would be tough for me. They pick out something and I'd be like, seriously? I know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I really want to um, try to influence their decision. But you are good I at know, that. You you have, I have to be very yeah. unbiased. I'm sure that's a, True. a learned. It, I was going to say, it. It you learn to do that over yeah. time, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. because Not to take I can it personal, right? And yeah. I appreciate all different styles, yeah. yeah. So traditional, contemporary, eclectic, anything, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas when I first came out of school. Nola really had to drill it into me. She's like, it's not about you and what you like. Don't let your personal style sway the choices you make for somebody else when it could be perfect for them. And um, my assistant, Abby, she's going through that right now, too. She's doing a great job. But it's always a learning curve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it it takes a while. And then you really appreciate all different kinds of decorating styles, all sorts of interior design. Um, But like I said, our main goal um, with all the decorators at our office, all of us designers, we want to make sure that our client likes it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it's not about your neighbor or your mom or your daughter or whomever. Right. Um, Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, you're the one living there or working there Mm -hmm. and we want you to be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the final result. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Do you ever have somebody pick something that's just really ugly? Yeah. 
And you're it's like, to me. oh, yes. right. I know they love it, but you're like, oh my gosh, now, that is so if ugly. If it does work, if it does work, I'll be honest, say that works. Yeah. I mean, it. like I said, it. I can, I can accept things for what they are. Like, hey, I, I understand why you would like that. Yeah. That's beautiful for the style you're going for. Right. I may not want to put it in my own house, right. but that doesn't mean it's ugly. Um, it just means that it, it wouldn't be for me. Right. right. But yes. now if it's if it's ugly and it won't look good, right. I that's my job. That's my your job, job is to say, mm, you know, I think we can do better right. than mm-hmm. that because, you know, yada yada yada. Yeah. Right. I right. give them the explanation. Maybe it's the wrong finish. Right. Who knows what it is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wrong but texture, that is wrong. Yeah. part of my yeah. job. My job is to allow my clients to kind of have free reign and, and, and pick what they want yeah. within these limitations of my job is you're paying me in essence to help you do, make correct decisions. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but then there's always more than one right choice. There's yeah. not one single right answer. Mm-hmm. There's lots of right answers, but then right. there's lots of wrong answers for whatever reason. Maybe mm-hmm. it's too big or too small. Right. Who knows why? Right. But I do have to tell people every once in a while, I really think we need to go a different route because. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. And honestly, generally, it doesn't have to do with looks. It's generally about the functionality or size yeah. and scale of something. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Usually I can make anything work. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Find reason that it all goes together, add some other pieces. Exactly. I can make sure it feels balanced with something over on the side of the room. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So what do you think the biggest misconception is about hiring an interior designer? I think, and, and I felt this way before I went into interior design, I just kind of, based on HGTV and some right. things, and mm-hmm. at that time, um, it was all more high-end things. They didn't really have, like, um, well, I guess they did. We had trading spaces. I don't know if you remember yes. that. That was the first HGTV mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. show, which I thought yeah. was awesome. Yes. But beyond that, everything was very high-end. Yeah. It mm-hmm. only the very wealthiest of people would hire a designer. Right. And I grew up in a small town where I knew no one who had used an interior designer right. mm-hmm. at, at all. Yeah. Not a, you know, I did not know of anyone. So that's the biggest misconception to me is that it's just for the uber wealthy. wealthy right. But one thing we pride ourselves on is being able to hit all different price points for people. Mm-hmm. Um, we usually say we go from kind of medium to high. We don't want to go real low because that's where the quality thing mm-hmm. comes sure. in, you know. And so yeah. we have to kind of draw the line on some things um, that we're unwilling to sell right. because we'd be liable when it breaks, not right. if, but kind of like when it breaks. Right. right. Yeah. But um, but we do the whole gamut of um, price ranges, and you know, like Angie was saying, I could do one item. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do a whole house. Right. right. I can do a whole house. Mm-hmm. Sure. But um, I do get calls sometimes. They're like, Heather, you know, we picked out that rug. I'm ready to work on that again. Right. Great. Mm-hmm. I'll get a. Te- I just did that for a client last week Mm -hmm. she texted me and she's like okay I'm ready to revisit that Mm -hmm. now super and then we work on that Mm -hmm. and so so there's nothing too small and there's really nothing too big yeah um I've also one thing I will throw in now because it's about it was a single purchase um I had to buy find an urn Oh. For somebody's mother-in-law's ashes. Oh, had you mm. ever had to do that before? No. Okay. Hmm. We did it though. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Good. She didn't fit all the way. Oh, interesting. What does one do when that happens? Scatter, <laughs> scatter the rest of one's ashes. <laughs> Have a picnic somewhere oh. that she wouldn't enjoy. Yes. <laughs> wow. I wouldn't have thought about that. Me so there you Love go. I can do that. <laughs> Uh, that's a good plug. It is. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Oh goodness. So do you do you have many projects or clients, I guess, that you go into and you have been hired to 
do their family room, their living space that they live in all the time. And you get there and you walk through the rest of the house. You can see some of their style mm -hmm. and none of it makes sense. Or they haven't decorated yeah. anything. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they've got to start somewhere. They've called you to start somewhere. Yes. So do you set up a plan for them and say, you know, let's start here for affordability reasons, right. maybe. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Generally, yeah. Because people most can't afford of us possibly can't do a whole redesign of your right. entire house. Every right. room, yes. every piece of art, every lamp. I mean, yeah. that's, that's not reasonable. Yeah, mm -hmm. for so, sure. Yes, we do. Um, I, and I like to do that. It doesn't matter what price point my client is wanting to hit. Right. I still do like to have that overall game plan yeah. of where are we going mm -hmm. or where do they want to go? They may not need any help or want my help with any of the secondary room. Right. Like, that's fine. Sure. You just tell me what you want me to help with. Yeah. And then I will help figure out, okay, I think your budget right now would best be spent towards... Um, art mm -hmm. in your living room. Yeah. Like you have furniture. Mm -hmm. Is it the furniture you want? No. But art, I think, will finish your room and make mm -hmm. it feel new and give you the kind of pizzazz mm -hmm. you're looking for yeah. until mm -hmm. you're ready to do the next phase. Got it. And so I do kind of, you know, I like to help people figure out where is the best spot to spend their budget. Right. Especially in that um multi-phase yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, cause I want them, I, I don't want a room to feel partially done right? and I don't want them to feel that way. Right. So, right. but I can help people with, okay, maybe they just need new lamps and a rug yep. and it mm -hmm. boom, pulls the room together yeah. and then later we can do furniture, wet, whatever it may be. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. To make sure yeah. it looks good along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so let's talk trends for 2024. Yes. yes. Um, let's talk, you know, every year they come mm -hmm. out with the color of the year and you see lots of things about what the color of your door should be, that yes. kind of thing. So yes. tell us what you're seeing. Well, first of all, I just to kind of explain the color of the year, mm -hmm. um, there are tons of colors of the year. <laughs> okay. So, Pantone is not the Pantone, only one. Pantone, no, mm -hmm. Pantone... Um, if you're unfamiliar, is a, is an organization that like categorizes and um, indexes color. Got it. Okay, so if I say I need Pantone number fifty one dash five, that's going to be a very 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 specific color. Mm -hmm. I can't buy that. Paint. They don't do paint. I don't buy that mm. color from them. Mm -hmm. But it's almost just a guide that a lot of people in interior design, in fashion, mm -hmm. and in advertising, they'll say, okay, reference what Pantone color this is. Mm -hmm. And that way it's kind of like a universal gotcha. language. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Because I could say something's blue and you may say it's gray. Uh -huh. Yeah. True. And so right. that's yeah. what it kind of like is a universal okay. color language. Okay. So they do come out with uh, their color of the year. But a lot of people see, or I see more of this than Pantone. I see like Sherwin-Williams mm -hmm. paint or Benjamin Moore paint color yes. of the year. And all of them are always different. Okay. So, you know, they, they each have their own like color forecasters mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who are analyzing. They're analyzing the economic state mm -hmm. of the world they yep. are analyzing um runway fashion all of these okay. things so um right now it's they're kind of softer you know tones okay however last year and and it's still continuing from what i've read we're still doing a lot of jewel tones mm -hmm. okay so like emerald green you yes. know green has been finally kind of trickled back in mm -hmm. after the blue so blue is still right. always going to be great um mm. that's very timeless but you're seeing a lot more uh, emerald uh we're even getting into like some eggplants and plum okay mm. like more usually like an accent yes yeah. right right um but a lot of where we're heading is with bolder solid colors you know we still do you know i'm a big fan of pattern i like mm -hmm. to layer patterns but that is just 
very hectic for some people. Sure. Like it just, it is not pleasant mm-hmm. to look right. at. Right. And in that case, you know, um, we would do bolder solids. Yeah. Um, but there are fewer people are doing an all neutral Look, it doesn't mean it's wrong or right. bad right. or right. out of style. Right. It's just we're talking about what's popular. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know what you're going to see in the media, and right. right. And and I I try to make sure that people know that it's doesn't matter if it's popular mm-hmm. or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, do you like it? Right. Yeah. Does it make you feel good? Yeah. Do yeah. you right. like it enough to have for several years? Right. right. Yes. And then if you say no, like, or I don't know, I'll be like, well, let's do something different because I want you to be very sure you're going to like this. Of course. Mm-hmm. You know, for a decent amount of time. Yeah. Right. Um, but as far as, so that's what we're talking about with trends are just kind of what you see in the media and, mm-hmm. and fashion world and things like that. So there are a lot of bold patterns. We're still seeing a ton of black and white, like very high contrast um kind of graphic things if you think of like a graphic art where it's um maybe a bold black pattern on top of a white background and it looks just Mm. like a silhouette of flowers or something let's say so bold like that Okay. okay um we are still doing a lot of farmhouse okay um we're doing that Mm -hmm. um it's getting I would call it like a little more tailored as the years go on. So okay. a little less shabby chic. Okay. okay. So we still do that. You know, I love eclectic. Right. Mm-hmm. Me too. Which has a lot yeah. of shabby chic in mm-hmm. it. You yeah. can mix that in. Mm-hmm. But um, as a look as a whole, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we're seeing things going a hair more tailored. So instead okay. of maybe a slip cover on your sofa, you're still going to do like a linen but it's going to be fully upholstered, just a little tighter, Fitted. a little, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. got it. A little less casual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're actually going a hair more formal. Okay. Um. But approachable, I guess you'd call it a, yeah. a, approachably formal. Yeah. You okay. know, where people yeah. still feel comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But it definitely has a more tailored. I think that's the big. I word. like that word. Tailored yeah. Yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. So, are we that. moving away from then the industrial farmhouse, or we're that? actually still doing a ton of that? Okay. And um, I was actually looking at some things for a client this morning, and I was very surprised it was all industrial. Mm. And so these were like new market introductions mm. uh, for spring. So, no, we're still doing. A lot of that, I think yeah. people are becoming more comfortable mixing their looks okay. and doing the eclectic yeah. thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that, once again, kind of like the pattern on pattern, that's very uncomfortable for some people. Mm-hmm. It is against their grain mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and doesn't mean they're not open to it, but it's kind of scary. Yeah. And so they don't want to try it themselves. And that's, you know, a lot of what we do happens to be the eclectic look because right. I think it's the hardest right. to do. Huh. To blend a bunch of pieces yeah. mm-hmm. and have it yeah. still look good, right? Yeah, you know, True. not a hodgepodge. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but no, we're still doing industrial, and they're coming out mm-hmm. with new pieces. I am seeing a lot of um, stained wood again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. For a while, it was like only painted. Yes. yes. Pieces. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not the case anymore. There's a much better, I would say, more of a fifty-fifty blend now okay. of. Um, tables and you know bookshelves and all sorts of things that are still stained, stained with a wood tone okay. rather than or even a the wash uh-huh. um, rather than painted mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so in kitchens in particular mm-hmm. are you seeing that as well because yes. that's kind of what I've seen in the last couple of years uh-huh. us go back to maybe some stained cabinets right. with a dash of painted right. in there mm-hmm. right absolutely um uh, we're doing a lot of new construction right now, and most of them are doing stained kitchen cabinets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe we'll still do paint in the bathrooms and laundry room to keep things lighter and brighter. Like Got maybe it. they do white or something like yeah. that. Now, with the mixing, which I love, 
oftentimes people in the in their kitchen will do their perimeter cabinets, so their outer cabinets that are against the walls, mm-hmm. um, either stain or paint. And then, of course, the island mm-hmm. would be the opposite right. of yes. that or yes. a contrasting color. Maybe they're both painted, mm-hmm. but um, we are seeing, along with the stain, we're seeing a lot of colorful cabinets. Okay. Yeah. Which I've seen a lot so of those fun. too. Yeah. And Angie's are beautiful. Hers mm-hmm. are green. green. Yeah. And, I and they're still stunning. Love them. Yeah. They're stunning. Yeah. yeah. And so that I think is actually the probably the trendier mm. thing, kind of the newer thing, I guess. Yeah. Because obviously stain yeah. has always been an option right. and has always been of beautiful course. and accepted. Yeah. But color hasn't been widely accepted mm-hmm. on cabinetry um, until now, it's really. True. Yeah. For the, I mean, for many decades it wasn't. So, yeah. so yeah. I'm excited to see that because, I mean, the sky's the limit. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah. So, do you? I can ask you both this. So, do you worry about on resale your green cabinets being a turnoff? That because right. obviously you and I both know Angie and right. Heather. You mm-hmm. do too because you see as many houses as we do. Yeah, we see a lot. Um, that if you are showing to maybe a certain age group or a certain um, thinking mm-hmm. that it all needs to be white or it all mm-hmm. needs to be stained, then you're, do you have a fear of those aging themselves out quicker right. than a safe choice would? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Angie, and I what's think, your answer? I think, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, Angie, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I think you run the risk of that with anything. And I, I think... For me, when I went in and started redoing this house, I was like, it's going to be in a price range when I sell it that it's going to appeal to first-time home buyers, yeah. and that's probably going to be a younger um, demographic. Yeah. And right. the I, I – let's see. I've been in my house two years now almost, and – I love the green. I still mm-hmm. love the green. I still walk into mm-hmm. my kitchen because and go. It's still a neutral. Yeah, it's a neutral. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I've got black and white um, countertops, and mm-hmm. you can throw anything black or white in it. Any kind mm-hmm. of yeah. kind of metal that will um, go with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you're right. It is sort of. A neutral, and I don't have a ton of cabinets, so it's right. not like yeah. It doesn't make it too dark in your right. kitchen, right? Yeah, right. yeah, makes sense. Because that would be a concern, sure. Yes. As far as a recommendation goes, I mean, I'm going right. to take that into consideration too. Mm-hmm. Even if someone says, "I would like green cabinets," right? I might say, "Okay, well, because of your lack of natural light or even right. overhead lighting, good overhead lighting, True. maybe we need to limit that to this." This mm-hmm. area, like the coffee bar area mm-hmm. or right. just the island, yeah. things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Now, as far as recommending things for resale, because mm-hmm. I usually, that's one of the first questions I ask clients is, okay, is this your forever home? Uh-huh. Uh, what do you anticipate? I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't need to know for sure, obviously, but right. do you think that you could see yourself selling within five or 10 years? And that gives me a better clue about, okay how kind of wild mm-hmm. we could get in certain spaces. Right, right. right. And I know, Ange, when you sell us our homes, it's usually like, I'll be like, should we add this? And you're like, well, I mean, it's not going to add value, but if you want you it, like it. Yeah. and yeah. you like it, then yeah. you should do it because yeah. yeah. you're going to be there to enjoy it. Right. So I say pretty much the same thing. Um, I will say I have found that age has very little to do with your design style anymore. Mm-hmm. Very, I I have seen that, you know, younger people to retirees, I mean, doesn't matter. Yeah. I have some that, you know, people in their 80s, they want very modern mm-hmm. and always That have. is surprising. It is. Yeah. 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 So I, I don't think, um, I think that's a, just a stereotype yeah. that mm-hmm. is yep. kind of, I think it was true for the most part yeah but now with the internet and everything Mm -hmm. and you know people being able to search for things that they like and Mm -hmm. pinterest that i'm always very surprised Hmm. at what styles people gravitate towards because i also have young people who want formal traditional Mm -hmm. they despise modern right Mm -hmm. so um 
I just never know yeah. now. And so yeah. with that in mind, not knowing for sure, um, I would suggest color selections that are what I call neutral. Yeah. So not just earth tones, you mm-hmm. know, like ivory and white and khaki and beige and gray mm-hmm. and brown, but I consider green and blue. Mm-hmm. To be neutrals because I think of, I always compare it to a pair of blue jeans. Mm -hmm. So you can wear denim, blue denim with any color. True. Okay. So that's that kind of blue um, on the darker Mm -hmm. side, not so much teal or aqua, but if you go more of a kind of a medium to darker blue, Mm -hmm. that's neutral. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. a color but it goes with everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the True. same thing with, with the True. darker greens. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you look out the window and the trees, like green just goes with everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as long as you stay in those deeper, yeah. deeper tones, right. they yeah. stay right. neutral enough to where I think it they could be appealing to anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. but I, I would recommend, you know, Rain. I'm, I probably wouldn't do green everywhere. Right. right. Sure. Yeah. On Break all the it up. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I love the green. I, I, you know, it's warm to me. Yes, I think it, so too. I would never have termed it as neutral, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or blue so I call is neutral, it neutral. So you've taught me something. I call mm-hmm. it neutral because, and, and honestly, that may not be the right term, but it's how I think of it. Yeah. And that's how I kind of explain it to my clients. Yeah. I think of it mm-hmm. as a neutral. I'm mm-hmm. like. Because in my mind, neutral goes with everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though there's color in it. So I know I'm, I'm sure that's not technically correct. But that's how I think of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it helps my clients understand, you know, where my thought process is right. going if I can explain it as yeah. a neutral. True. Right. Yeah. Blue jeans. I'm like, just think of blue jeans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, good I analogy. Like that. Yeah. Um, real quick, I wanted to ask you about finishes. You know, we've mm-hmm. gone from brass to silver to matte silver to black or bronze and now gold is back again yeah. but mm-hmm. it's not the gold of the 80s no. so right. it's different yeah. right <laughs> yeah so and and I get this question a lot too this is another area where people get very nervous uh, mixing metals mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes okay yes. and I get that mm-hmm. and here's my analogy for that it's like when people wore brown shoes and a black belt and it was like oh, right. oh no what are you doing <laughs> poor thing oh no bless her heart oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well that is not how people think now it's about right. balance yeah mm-hmm. like i am wearing brown neutral earrings mm-hmm. and i'm wearing black pants right mm-hmm. i'm balancing and i've got brown on the elbows yes, like yeah. it's about balancing those colors and the same thing with metals so a lot of times people are going to have like a stainless steel sink Mm -hmm. whether or not their door handles are brass or black or chrome who knows right so i tell people okay if you're worried look at your sink Mm -hmm. your sink's stainless that's neutral right you can put these other metals with it. It's mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm a big fan of, of mixing, but that's where you need to think, okay, I've got black over here, so maybe I need a little over here and over here so it doesn't feel wrong mm-hmm. or out of place. Mm-hmm. Um, we are doing a ton with gold. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, um, since the finishes are all named something completely different, that, right. you yes. know, you just never know. It depends yeah. on what brand you're looking at. Yeah. So... A lot of times it's a brushed brass, Mm -hmm. and that's kind of that warmer gold. Yeah. And so that's the one with the striations on it, like brushed nickel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So like it's been rubbed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But we're also doing kind of a bright gold, like kind of the 24 karat, like brighter yellow Mm -hmm. gold, Mm -hmm. um, and go all the way into like coppers and, Mm -hmm. and, and... you know, warm bronzes. So, I mean, mm. when when we say gold, you're going to see a huge range mm-hmm. of colors. Yeah. Yeah. And and most of these colors work together. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so that's where I would say, you know, do a little research or get a professional to help you if you're um, yeah. unsure. Right. Because most of the combinations will work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some are not very great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, I advise people a lot. Like, they have brass doorknobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have a giant house, that could be it's a expensive. fortune yes. 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 to worry about replacing all the doorknobs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, hold. Like, like, wait first. Let's think. Mm -hmm. Well, I know black things look good with brass. Mm -hmm. um, actually, chrome, so shiny silver, that looks good with shiny brass. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things you could do there mm -hmm. to... You know, maybe you want your new light fixtures. Do those in like a brass or, or I'm sorry, a black or a chrome. And then you could still have your shiny brass mm -hmm. on your doorknobs. And it's okay mm -hmm. because they harmonize Got yes. it. with yeah. each other. Okay. Yeah. So, but some, like I said, some combinations work, some don't. Right. But, um, but yeah, you, you know, I think people get it in their head. Oh, shoot. If I switch one like cabinet hardware, like if I change the cabinet hardware in one room, it's all gonna yeah. match. Everything yeah. has yeah. to go. That is not the case. Yeah, yeah. that is and not I, the case. I think that's great to make that distinction because yeah. I know when when I'm talking to people about doing little updates so that their house will sell, I think mm -hmm. they they start to think, okay, if I do this, then I have to do that, and then mm -hmm. I've got to do this, and just snowballs. Yes, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. You made a comment in my office when we were doing my office. There were silver but they're brush more brush nickel mm -hmm. light fixtures in my yes. conference room yes and i wanted to go more gold accents that kind of thing right. so i thought i was going to have to switch out right. my light fixtures in my conference room and you said you don't need to do that they just blend in you yep. don't even and you're right i don't, don't even, even notice low. those no. mm. i don't even notice them at all mm -hmm. i don't notice that they're silver mm. anymore uh -huh. i just it just Blends right into the ceiling. Once another neutral. Yeah, it's like another neutral. It goes with everything. You yeah, know, that's how I think of it. Yeah, got it. And it, yeah, if you want gold, so we put in accessories or whatever it may be for right. little pops of gold right. on things that you can change. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yeah. I, and I do think a lot of people are afraid of that snowball effect, and that that can be true mm -hmm. depending on what you're working right. on. Yeah, there right. can be a snowball effect. Yeah, right. But when it comes to faucets, mm -hmm. door handles, hinges freak people oh, out, yes. yeah. you know, yes. cabinet hardware, yeah. those things, they can stand alone. Mm -hmm. They can't, if we're doing it correctly, right. you can just change one or two of those things right. mm -hmm. and leave everything else and it'll be, it'll be perfectly great. It'll mm -hmm. be great. Yeah. I love that. I don't want people to spend yeah. money that there's just no reason. Need, yes. Exactly. Unless and, they just want to, if they want right. to change it, right. super. Yes. Right. But. Um, I don't want them to feel like they have to change something. Right. Right. And in our job, in many cases, we're going in and giving these suggestions that, you know, you, you the yeah. professional, are giving as well right. on your same appointments. Suggest. Yeah, same yeah. suggestions. And whether or not to change out all the doorknobs mm -hmm. and all, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So I think you've just given a lot of food for thought for people Absolutely. who maybe are going to update one or can afford to update one or the other Absolutely. doorknobs or light fixtures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if they choose the right thing, they'll play off of each other yes. and you won't have to necessarily do all of it. No, right. Exactly. Right. I, and my thinking is we're, there's always going to be some sort of solution. Like we can figure out yes. something. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> the way yeah. I go into yeah. it. Like, yeah. no, makes it affordable. Yeah. We don't need to do that. If you want yeah. to, that's different. Yeah. Great. Exactly. For sure. Super. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I don't go want in people and do to feel like they have to. Right. right. And we don't yeah. either. When we go right. in, we no. want to make recommendations that are going to help them sell their house faster, but try to do that on, on, a, on a low budget. On a budget. Because, right. you know, they're not going to be leaving. leaving. Yeah. They're leaving. It's yeah. not yes. going to be their house anymore. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. What about um, grays and whites? So... I work with a builder, and so we, you know, we, for years, feels like we do the same things for a while, yes. and then we start to kind of change direction and go a yeah. different way, and gray has been in all of our lives mm -hmm. for what feels like forever. I would mm -hmm. say about 10 years. I was going to say, in I could say area? five, but yeah. that's not accurate. It's it, yeah. got to be Closer 10. Closer to 10. Agree. Um, 
it's become more widespread and accepted within the last five for yeah. sure. But I noticed it, um, and on the coast, east and west coast, mm -hmm. it happened many years before that. Right, mm -hmm. yes. And then it slowly filters in yes. to the Midwest, mm -hmm. yeah. which yeah. is fine. Yeah. But, you know, we're always a little bit behind yeah. um, what's new out here and out here. Right. Mm -hmm. So... I would say we've been seeing grays for probably around 10 years. And then mm -hmm. before that, it was taupe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then before that, it was more of a gold undertone. If mm -hmm. we're talking about, um, let's just say, interior wall, wall. paint. Yes. yes, yes. Well, now we're seeing more brown come back, more uh, warmer tones mm -hmm. come in. Mm -hmm. But those tones mix beautifully with grays. Mm -hmm. So... I would suggest maybe a little bit of each. I think there's a nice mm -hmm. balance if you have yeah. some right. gray and maybe um, warmer stained furniture, mm -hmm. let's yeah. say, yeah, you yeah. know, um, so that there's some warmth and then a little coolness, mm -hmm. you know, from the colors. That way there's a balance mm -hmm. yeah. because I think too much of the same thing, no matter what it is, is, too, is not good. It's too much. <laughs> it's yes. too much. It's too gray. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, they do. It's like mixing metals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those neutrals, they all go together. We're yeah. still doing a lot of gray. Mm -hmm. We still are. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, people are – I'm I'm kind of pushing people to go a little warmer. Mm -hmm. um, and we would do gray accents. So before, it would be – right gray with a few neutral warmer accents mm -hmm. and now we're kind of seeing a little bit of a flip-flop of that on. yeah um but that's a good thing because you can kind of like you can kind of subtly change your designs mm -hmm. in your own homes or your living room or bedroom mm -hmm. um by switching one or two things, yeah, bedding or a throw blanket, right, or pillows, yes. yes, you know, and and lean whichever direction you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I tell people, you know, don't worry, yeah, about the gray going right. away. It's still going to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We use it all the time in some form. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just that you're seeing more people being comfortable with mixing mm -hmm. warmer neutrals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're still doing a lot of that. And yeah. white. And we're white. still doing a lot of white. Yeah. White trim. It mm -hmm. just looks really clean and yes. fresh. I mean, it just, it's always going to look good. Yeah. yeah. It's never going to go away. Um, we are, though, on that note, doing more stain uh, trim again. Okay. Um, still mainly painted. Mm -hmm. Still mainly painted. Um, one fun combination is when you have, like, stained doors. But then all of your base and your door trim and crown molding are painted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just a really kind of luxe yeah. look. It's right. just mm -hmm. that contrast. It just looks really sharp. Mm -hmm. um, or vice versa. Maybe you have painted doors mm -hmm. and stained trim. Trim, yeah. yeah. But, you know. I like that and it, look, The too. trim doesn't have to be white just because it's painted. Yeah. Right. We're doing a lot of dark. Like uh -huh. charcoal mm -hmm. colored trim, okay. very light walls. Mm -hmm. um, another trend with the trimmings is um, people actually doing wall and base and crown all the same mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. That's another very mm -hmm. rich look. Mm -hmm. um, you see that a lot in, um, if you were to Google it, you're going to see a lot of um, like home offices. Mm -hmm. You're going to see built-ins on the walls, yeah. and you're going to see sometimes even the ceiling mm -hmm. yes. all the way down. It's mm -hmm. all one color. And the idea of that sounds wrong yeah. right. to me, yeah. but every time I see it, I'm like, oh, that, that looks so good. Yeah. It just is, it's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost becomes kind of subtle because now it's, all the same. Right, right. So you're focused yeah. on different things. You're focused on maybe what's in the bookcases. Mm -hmm. You're not fo mm -hmm. focused on the bookcases. Mm -hmm. Right. What's what are, what are in those bookcases? Right. Right. Yeah. And so um we we are seeing seeing that as well when it comes to mm -hmm. trim and and wall color. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh what about shiplap? Are you still seeing a lot of that? Um 
Not as much. Okay. Not as mm-hmm. much. Like we still use it. Yeah. Um, and, and once again, we're kind of going in the more tailored mm-hmm. right direction. Yes. Yeah. And there's different forms of horizontal mm-hmm. siding. Right. Mm-hmm. We're gonna call it. Yeah. Right. Um yeah. so sometimes it's actually shiplap. Mm-hmm. Um and that's kind of a it, it's a ve- that's a very specific mm-hmm. term, but people use it more broadly, right? It, and I get that. Yes, mm-hmm. but you're going to see different forms of horizontal, yeah, siding, horizontal mm-hmm. wall applications. Yeah, um, we still do those. Uh, what seems to be coming back more though, um, we're going less horizontal mm-hmm. siding and more like wainscoting. Yes. Again, yes. and a lot of that. Yes. Um, yes. You know, that for yeah. large geometric patterns. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, that is really kind of everywhere. And it, and it looks gorgeous. Yes. And yes. once again, like the wallpaper, yeah. it's awesome for a focal yes. wall. And so yeah. even a lot of spec homes are going up with those accent, mm-hmm. like walls molded yeah. walls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I do too. I'm like, and that just seems like such a nice upgrade. I'm it like, does. and those are just spec homes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, That's so awesome. yeah. So we're seeing more of that uh, yeah. kind of geometric direction mm-hmm. and, and pattern yeah. on the mm-hmm. wall compared to horizontal, but we still see okay. those accents and that horizontal um, siding, whatever form it takes, honestly kind of goes with everything. Yeah. You can put yeah. it in any style home. True. You can. Um, right. Because it could be painted, it, but right. it could be stained yes. and then it has a whole different look. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, I think of that as something that's really, has turned into something versatile. Yeah. Yes. That and was less farmhouse. Yes. Yes. Because it Everything started farmhouse. as just farmhouse. Yeah, yes. I agree. But started now yeah. it, you <clears throat> can fit that in with any style, and yeah. it's going to look good. Yeah, depending on it's just, you know how rustic true. you go exactly. with those boards. That's true. That's right. the main thing. Yeah, yeah. it's a great mm-hmm. point. Anything else that we've left off the twenty twenty four trends? Um, I don't think so. I mean, once again, the main thing. Um, I would still say jewel tones. Once mm-hmm. again, they're, they've been kind of slowly filtering back in. Mm-hmm. Um, they are still everywhere. People are still using some like blush, like blushy rose. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to be going in a little more orangey, peachy direction. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's just honestly, it's just a huge gamut yeah. as far as color goes. Um, I think the key there is color yeah. Yeah. compared to just off whites, right? Yes. And yes. things, yeah. Neutrals, yeah. And everything. And then animal print is always, always in. Always. Love animal print. It's so yeah. awesome, and that's one of those timeless things that. Yes. Back when you were using real animal hides, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it, I mean, that's where it comes from from thousands of years ago, yeah. and yeah. so those kinds of things always look good. Yeah. yeah. Um, they'll never go out of style. Yeah. Love animal mm-hmm. prints. Too. And um, my mom can dig her orange pillows out of her closet, and they're sure. right back in style. Oh, yep. yes, they are. <laughs> yep. Yes. That's what I thought of when you said yeah. going towards the orange. It, like, is. Oh, it is. Maybe we shouldn't throw those away. <laughs> nope. Just keep everything for 20 years, yeah. and it'll circle back around. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it'll just circle back too. around. It yes. does. It's it right, does. Yeah, it seems to be right at around yeah. 20. Yeah. 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 Well, as we get ready to wrap up, Heather, you have told us so many mm-hmm. things. It's been a real education for me. Yeah. Um, tell us a funny decorating story, a horrific decorating story. Yes. Do you have a really good story that comes to mind on the spot? Yeah, I. you know, we get so many special Things that right. happen, <laughs> yes. um, like you all do in uh-huh. real yes. estate. Uh-huh. Um, you know, some are funny, some are sad, some are bad, exactly. some are just yes. a nightmare. Yes. Um, but some of the funny things that have happened, I'm actually, this is actually a story of Nola's I'm going to tell. Oh, okay. And it's okay. one of my favorites. Okay. So um, the, it kind of is a, a two parter. So they were in Branson installing some draperies and and, uh, and a bunch of things for a children's room. Okay, mm-hmm. so it was for um, Christmas. So this this whole room transformation was going to be the Christmas gift mm-hmm. for the oh, okay. little girl. Okay, okay. 
So they were on the tail end of, you know, installing everything and putting all of her toys back and, you know, making everything just look perfect and awesome. And, and um, somebody fell on the Barbie dream house and crushed the Barbie dream house, which was also part of the Christmas gift. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And so they glued it back together. Um, <laughs> and it worked. The client did know eventually. <laughs> so Barbie dream house. Um, but all was well. Uh-huh. The kid never knew. It was fine. Yeah. Oh. Um, and the then, roof is just at a different pitch exactly. than it was. She wouldn't exactly. know. It was fine. Exactly. She didn't know. Yeah. So we're, you know, and that's at the at the moment is devastating. Oh, oh like, for sure. We ruined a kid's Christmas. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's that. And you probably horrific. couldn't get one. No, by this Amazon was Christmas to the, Eve. Yeah. To yeah. The no, house this was the Christmas next day. Eve. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, mm. so that was one that's now is funny, um, and right. it's funny because it didn't happen to me. Right. <laughs> um, yes. And then another funny story with Nola. It, I believe it's the same clients. I, I could be wrong, but um, we have a, we receive all of these um, pieces and parts for like draperies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're putting up a set of draperies, you've got the fabric panel part, you've got the rod, the brackets, the rings, the mm -hmm. finials. So you have all of these little pieces and parts. So they come in multiple boxes. Well, um, lo and behold, they found a dead chipmunk in, oh. in one of the hardware boxes. Poor little guy. Poor little guy. Poor little guy. He yeah. was dead. <laughs> and so then our installer, Marshall, he has, still gives her crap. This still they talk about Chippy. <laughs> so Chippy the chipmunk, poor little Chippy. So they found, and of course, he didn't smell great. Oh. So they had to run him out of the house and like kind of defume the <laughs> drapery hardware and everything. But once again, funny, scary at the time. Because right. you're like, oh, yeah. no. what is yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. but now, once again, it didn't happen to me. Yeah. So, so yeah. it was funny. funny. I love it's it. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> funny. Yeah. Oh, that is yeah. funny. Well, Heather, thank you so much for our lively conversation. I've learned a lot today. Me too. Yeah. Yep. So awesome. we hope Thanks you have for having me. too. And I um, want to thank Gershman for letting us use their studio. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Simply Authentic podcast. Be sure to hit follow so that you can see each episode as it pops up weekly. Mm -hmm.